to improve their lives. Sautiku gives nothing for free because there's no reason to give anything for free. We don't believe in that. We ask the people to look at what resources they have. In the community I work with in Western Kenya, the people have a lot of land, but they hardly farm it. We import food. That doesn't make sense. The people can feed themselves, and that is what Sautiku tells them. They just have to farm their land. The problem, however, is that we Kenyans decided a long time ago that farming is not cool. Anybody who goes back up country and farms actually is a failure because they didn't make it in the city, because all of us actually want a white-collar job. And what we're telling the communities and the children is that farming is totally cool because we all have to eat. And where is that food going to come from? And actually today in Central you find many people working in banks and in wherever in white-collar jobs that at the weekend they go home and farm their land and are able to feed themselves and actually put their kids through school. So that's what we're trying to teach in the western part of Kenya, where there's a lot of land that is not being used. We have people starving in this country, when we, although we have land that is arable land that can be used to farm. So that is the message that Sautiku is bringing across. What we're doing on the 16th is opening a center, and many have asked what this center is. People have said it's a university, some have said it's a, I don't know, a sports complex, an academy, all sorts of things. The interesting thing about this place, I've been building it for three years, working on it quietly. It's very big. I mean, it's, it's, it stands out when you go to that area for those who've been. And believe you me, nobody has ever come to our office to ask us, what is it we're doing? And I'm talking to you media people because you have written about it. You've called it everything possible, and we're very, very accessible. So let me tell you now what it is. And many times when people have asked from the community, I've told them, ask the children because the children know what it is. What we're building there is a state-of-the-art center for knowledge, learning, and excellence, meaning that it is not institutionalized. It is not categorized as an academy, a school. It is a space where there will be access to, uh, to, to um, internet and to the world, world, world Wide Web, so knowledge. It will be a place where there will be a library so the community, the children can access books and read because Kusoma Nipoa, you know that already from Story Moja. We need our children to read, and they need to be reading books. Why? Because our children go to school and learn in a language that is not their first language, not their second language, and many times not their third language. And they're expected to pass exams, and this in the rural area. And what I tell those children, just because you don't speak English doesn't mean you're not smart. But unfortunately, you learn in English, so you must learn English. And the reason why I speak English the way I speak it, the reason why I can write so well in English is because I read. So that is what the library is going to do. It's going to give the children access to the languages that they need in order to pass exams. So that is what they will find in this place of excellence, learning, and knowledge. The other thing is we're going to do a lot of stuff around sports. We have a state-of-the-art basketball court that has been built by our donor. We have volleyball and netball. We have a football pitch that is of an international size. And we have table tennis and all the other recreational sports activities that young people can do. We're not trying to get out of there a Rinaldo or Victor Wanyama or, or Liech. That is a bonus if it happens. But the point is that children not only have to play, but they need to do sports in order to be healthy and also because it brings out who they are. These rural children don't have very much confidence. And when they play sports, they get loud. They use their voice. They have team spirit. They're taken, they're, 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 when you shoot that goal, you're special. So it's teaching the children using different methods to realize how important they are as individuals. That's what we do at Sautiku. The other key part of our work, and one of the key points in that center, will be the vocational center. And I call it consciously vocational center because it is not an institution. It is not a school. It is not a college. It is not a polytechnic. It is a place where young people will have the opportunity to try out different vocations in order to realize that you do not get to the successful place you get to only by using your head and being in a white-collar job. Many jobs that you do with your hands, artisan jobs, give you a lot of financial stability. And the problem that we have is we're not realizing it, that more and more we have less and less artisans at our disposal, so it's becoming very, very difficult to find a good plumber, a good electrician, a good welder, because people are doing this job begrudgedly, reluctantly, because actually they want to sit in an office with a white-collar job. And we want the kids to realize that you can make so much money. In Europe, if you want a plumber, you wait six months. And just to come and look at what you need to be done, you already pay him about six. 600, no, 6,000 Kenya shillings, the equivalent, just to come and look before he's touched anything. So actually, that is a mine goal, a gold mine, 
where young people can make a lot of money. And I tell them, you want to be an architect? You want to be a doctor? How are you going to pay for your university? Imagine in Europe, people work in different jobs and pay their way through school. If you learn auto mechanics, you repair all the cars of your professors, your, your friends, and whatever, and pay your way through school. Why not? So we're trying to change the mentality of the people to realize that you have options, you have opportunities, you have possibilities. So the vocational center that is going to teach eight different vocations all around construction, masonry, electrics, plumbing, welding, carpentry, you know, all these will be taught at the center and they will taught so that you learn the skill to the point where you appreciate the work that you're doing. So you make something and you know your signature is on it. So I don't have to call you back and say, hey, Mr. Plumber, my plumbing is not working, and the guy tells you, no, I'm not coming back, I'm done. And if you want me to come back, you have to pay for my bus fare, and on top of that, you have to pay me again. The work ethics there is horrible. I could use a stronger word. It's rotten, and we all go through it. Anybody who has built anything in this country knows it. We need to change that, and that's what South Korea is going to do. And that's why this vocational center is more than an institution, more than something where you go and uh, pass exams. It's about learning the value of working with your hands. And we will be working with children starting from very small. They're going to come in and try out, you know, make things out of clay. Try and make things out of wood. You know, the way we used to make these little catapults and what have you. So that they realize and appreciate it. And we'll be exhibiting this. And the children will be able to work with it and say, we have made this. And we're putting it in our houses. We're putting it in my room. We're putting it in my Simba, where they live. This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to change the mentality of gonya gonya. This is a lure word which means give me, give me, help me, help me. We don't need to be helped. We can help ourselves. That's what South Korea is trying to teach. Do not keep begging. If you look around you, you'll find that you have so many resources. You are not a victim. You are not a victim of poverty because poverty, the way we define poverty, is not real poverty. When you look at the western part of Kenya, those people are not poor. The people just don't have the knowledge and they don't have the exposure to use the wealth that they have. And that's what South Korea is trying to do, is to help them to use the wealth that they have in order to improve their lives. And the truth is that South Korea has not given a penny to any of those families. We tell them to come to us. We teach them how to use the land. We help them create kitchen gardens where they feed themselves, the excess food they take to the market, so they're earning money. We help them uh, get into groups to do table banking, so that they put away their money, they save their money, and they work with us so that they learn how to actually manage the wealth that they have. And we also are going to help them to store their, their products that they get from the farm because the center has a storage space uh, that we have made as well. Like we call it a dero in Luo, but it's a joke because the dero is a small little thing where you could go in and put your little bit of grain. We actually have a whole section under the vocational center that is going to be a storage space because that's the biggest problem in agriculture, storing of grain after you've had a bumper harvest. Most of the harvest, harvest gets destroyed or is sold very, very cheap. So we're teaching them how to put their stuff away so they know that when there's a dry season, they can have food to eat and they can also sell it. And hopefully, when we get to the point that the work gets more, um, it, it progresses more, we will be able to work in a cooperative sort of uh, way so that people are not all selling skuma, all selling tomatoes, all selling maize, so that the, the prices go down. So it's teaching the community how to use their wealth. And first and foremost, the children. So the children are also farming. Farming is cool. Farming is not only cool, it feeds you. And that's the message that we're bringing across. Poverty is no excuse. Opportunities are unlimited, and you use what you have locally to get what you need. That is the essence of what Sautiku is trying to do. And the best part of it is that we've done it as an NGO, a nonprofit, but we haven't put out a begging bowl. Every donor, international and national, who has supported me, I have sat with them. We've had a conversation. They've understood my vision. It has taken sometimes a year, two years, for them to finally sign on the dotted line and say, okay, we're in partnership. You're going to get that funding. And for me, it was fine. I have been able to decline funds, not because I'm special, not because I have my surname, but because it had to make sense. I had to know what I was going to do with this money because I have to report back on it. I have to say what I've done with it. It has to fit into our program. So we were going pole pole, pole pole ndio muendo, harakaraka ina baraka. I've been on the ground working there since 2009. None of you know it. None of you really know me. But I've been there in the rural area. And now what you're seeing is the fruition of all those 